state spell your first and last name for the court now into the mic from the court. My name is Mark Belknap, M-A-R-K-B-E-L-K-N-A-P. Good morning, Detective Belknap. How are you? Good morning. Detective Belknap, would you start off by introducing yourself to the jury and telling them where it is that you work currently? So, good morning. Good morning. I'm Detective Mark Belknap. I'm employed by the Atlanta Police Department. What is your position with the Atlanta Police Department? So, I'm a detective in our, our gang unit. How long have you held that position? I've been in the gang unit since 2012. I'm sorry, I've been in the gang unit since uh, 2009, been a detective in the unit since 2012. Prior to working as a detective in the gang unit, did you hold any other positions at the Atlanta Police Department? I did. Would you tell the jury about them? So I started out in 2005 in our police academy, um, graduated and became a patrol officer, initially assigned to Zone 6, which is our patrol zone that covers East Atlanta, um, the east side of the city. After that time, where were you transferred in the city of Atlanta Police Department? So after a couple of years on patrol, um, what we call the watch, um, I um, served for a couple of years on a field investigations team, um, or a FIT team. Essentially, we do plain, plain clothes and undercover work um, within the patrol zone, um, often responding to crime trends within the zone. These may be burglaries, robberies, narcotic sales, things of that nature. We did that for about two years. Were there any differences between your responsibilities as a member of the FIT team and your responsibilities as a patrol officer? There were. Would you explain those to the jury? Relevance. Had an objection, sir? Mr. Uh, Mr. Steele? Relevance. Yes. Overruled. As a patrol officer, our primary responsibility is responding to calls for service. Um, if someone calls 911 needs assistance, um, we would then respond and um, answer that call. And they also do proactive patrol, things of that nature, um, attempting to uh, deter crime by officer presence. As part of the field investigations team, we did more investigative style work. Um, if crime was occurring, as I mentioned before, burglaries, robberies, things of that nature, we would um, attempt um, investigative work to determine um, who may be committing those crimes, why they may be happening and where, and attempt to intercede um, and, and stop those, those crime patterns or trends. Now, in both your positions as a patrol officer and your position with the FIT team, did you have an opportunity to regularly interact with people in the community as well as people that you were investigating? I did. And did all of those interactions result in someone's arrest or were some of them non-custodial type of interactions? Uh, particularly as a patrol officer, the vast majority of contacts that I had did not result in anyone's arrest. Um, and even on the FIT team, we often um, interacted with the community through community meetings um, to be able to hear firsthand from the community what their concerns were in particular neighborhoods. And so oftentimes our interactions had nothing to do with arresting anyone. After you worked on the FIT team, what other positions within, within the Atlanta Police Department did you hold? So as I mentioned earlier, in 2009, I was transferred to our gang unit, um, initially as an officer in that unit. Um, I worked as a patrol officer assigned to the gang unit for several years and then was promoted in August of 2012 to detective and um, have remained in the gang unit since that time. Let's talk a little bit about the gang unit and your qualifications for being an investigator within the gang unit. Um, what training did you get before being assigned as a patrol officer to the gang unit? as it relates to gangs? So the initial training that we get is in the police academy. We have a, a fairly short course, um, an introductory course, to help us recognize criminal street gangs and potential uh, criminal street gang activity. Um, after that, the next gang training that I got specifically would have been in 2008 as part of that field investigations team. I took two classes in particular that year. Um, one of them was a criminal street gang strategic operations course. The purpose of that course was to um, provide some information on the recognition and identification of gang members and gang activity, but also, also to help us plan operations um, to combat criminal activity um, in places where they were committing crime in a particular community. Um, so those may be leveraging resources like probation and parole officers, um, how to set up tact tactical operations in a way that's safe um, for the officers that are involved, sometimes using plainclothes or undercover officers 
um, in order to be able to observe and uh, interact with gang members. Um, the second course that I took in 2008 was an advanced gang prosecutions course. That course focused more on um, understanding our state's gang statute, our state's gang law, and the application of that law to crimes committed by gang members, understanding what was necessary to prosecute those crimes, and how to identify and recognize whether a crime was, in fact, in violation of that law. Your Honor, can we approach? Yes, Mr. Steele. Turn your devices on. I just, Mr. Steele. And turn your devices down, please. Got to hold them. Got to hold a button and talk in the microphone. Hold on. Function check. Right hear me? Okay. All right. Okay, you have to hold yours down in order to speak with it. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I believe I completed answering the question. Okay. Now, when you spoke about leveraging uh, resources such as probation officers. Objection to repeating the direct. Just ask the question. Oh. Object to the form of oh. When you spoke about leveraging resources such as probation officers, uh, during your training that you received, 
during the strategic operations course. Would you explain to the jury what, what that entails and why that is important? Sure. So <clears throat> dealing with criminal street gangs, um, inevitably at some point, some will be arrested. And um, at, su at some point, they may uh, be placed on probation as part of their sentence. And as part of their probation, oftentimes there are um, specific uh, criteria, specific rules that they must follow as part of their probation, including things like not congregating or associating with other gang members, um, not participating in criminal activity, things of that nature. Um, in order to address gang activity, it's often helpful to work with probation officers to help report those things that we may observe that may be violations of their probation um, in order to keep them on track of probation or um, to the extent that they may not be willing to follow probation, um, open up the door for potential violation of their probation. Prior to working with the Atlanta Police Department, have you any training or any education as it relates to gang activity or criminal street gangs? I had some. Would you explain that to the jury? So I have a degree in sociology from Emory University. Um, I graduated um, a long time ago. I guess I'll put it on the record in 2001. Um, during my study of sociology at Emory, I um, had the opportunity to take a class on juvenile delinquency. And it was taught by Dr. Robert Agnew, who's one of the country's foremost experts on juvenile delinquency. Um, as part of that course, we studied um, delinquent peer groups and street gangs, um, as well as other aspects of ju juvenile delinquency um, throughout the semester long course. I'm going to show you what has been marked and has been provided to the defense as case exhibit one, floor case alpha. It is a great deal of detail. May I approach on? Thank you. Sorry to the defense, It has. It has been provided to the defense uh, and it has been previously during a separate and hearing. And have not been changed since you last provided to them? I can state that it has not, and Your Honor, I'll ask the witness to do so as well so that the testimony is reflected in the record. Okay. Showing you safety exhibit 1A, do you recognize it? I do. How do you recognize it? This is a copy of my curriculum vitae. And if I may, yeah. There's a bigger font, so. <clears throat> yes. Do you I do. One A. I do. Has it, in any way, materially been altered since the last time that you provided it to the state? Um, no, ma'am. And is that a fair and accurate copy of the curriculum vitae that reflects your experience in training and education? It is. Your Honor, the state tender states is it 1A? An objection to states 1A. Going out to the jury, yes, sir, not for the record. States 1A will be admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. I have one objection. What's the basic objection, Mr. Harvey? There is a sentence in the, in the proposed exhibit. Um, it's not going to go to the jury, so can we deal with it another time, sir? Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll I'll make a note to do that. I did not. Tell the jury what it is that you did. So I worked for several years um, in private security, um, mainly at, at nightclubs um, around the city, kind of a post-college job for a few years until I decided what I wanted to do with my life and join the Atlanta Police Department. And working in private security at nightclubs around the city, does that give you the opportunity as well to interact with the community? I sustain the objections to form. While you perform your duties as private security, did you have any opportunities to interact with members of the community in as well? I did. And were those in confrontational situations or various types of situations? 
um, various situations. And um, working in nightclubs, you can imagine there were occasional conflicts, but um, one of the things that I did professionally in that capacity was really worked on ways to provide customer service um, more so than anything else in that security um, environment, which we were very successful at. To become a law enforcement officer with the city of Atlanta, are you required to be post-certified? And by post, I speak of the Peace Officer Standards and Training Council of York. Yes, ma'am. And are you post-certified? I am. Have you remained post-certified during your entire time with the Atlanta Police Department? I have. Once you were assigned to the gang unit, uh, did you receive any further training as it relates to the identification, the investigation, and the practices of criminal street gangs? I did. Would you tell the jury about those trainings? Sure. So arriving in the gang unit, um, we essentially got a lot of on-the-job training initially, but I also got connected with several uh, intelligence meetings that are held um, in jurisdictions around the state, particularly around the metro Atlanta area. Um, I began attending the Gwinnett County Gang Intelligence Meeting. Um, they meet monthly, and I went um, fairly regularly, um, even early on. And those meetings typically will have two components. The first will be a training session, someone coming in to offer some sort of training on some aspect of gang recognition, identification, or prosecution. And then the second part would be um, an intelligence sharing session where investigators working a variety of cases can, can bring those and present them to the group and ask for assistance uh, going through those and looking for investigative leads or maybe tying, um, tying cases together across different jurisdictions. So we got a lot of early education there from some very experienced gang investigators. Um, and after those first couple of years, I um, began getting uh, more uh, formal training and attending more courses as well. In 2012, I went through our state's 40-hour gang investigators course, which is taught at the Georgia Public Safety Training Center. Um, it's a week-long course that covers um, essentially all aspects of gang recognition and investigation, including history of street gangs, um, recognition of street gangs, even practical exercises in decoding uh, gang messages or gang language, um, as well as information on the law as it pertains to street gangs and, uh, and applying that and testifying in court. Um, other training that I received over the years, I've um, been able to attend uh, for many years the Georgia Gang Investigators Association annual training conference. Um, that again is a week-long training uh, session and it has multiple sessions by uh, gang trainers uh, and uh, experienced gang investigators or prosecutors from around the state and even from all over the country uh, who come in and teach on specialized topics within this world of criminal street gang investigations. And I've attended that um, for many years. I've also had the opportunity to attend the National Gang Violence Conference in Los Angeles, California. Um, that's hosted by the California Gang Investigators Association. And it again has speakers from all over the state of California as well as the country um, and has a focus on West Coast gangs, which has been um, very helpful to uh, developing my knowledge and, and my, uh, my understanding of criminal street gangs. The last several years, um, I've attended the uh, World Gang Summit, which was hosted by the National Alliance of Gang Investigators Associations, and it brings in a perspective um, nationally and even internationally uh, to the world of gang investigations and uh, recognition. Has the training that you have received during your time with the Atlanta Police Department regarding gang activity and criminal street gangs come only from conferences and classes that you've attended? It has not. Would you explain to the jury where else it comes from? So as I said, we get a lot of on-the-job training. Um, a lot of what we learn about gangs and what they're doing comes from the gangs themselves. Um, sometimes that's our own observations of, of them, our own investigative work. Uh, sometimes it comes from talking to gang members, not always in custodial situations. Um, this could surprise you, but um, oftentimes we develop a rapport or a, kind of an ongoing relationship with some of the gang members here in the city. I mean, I've even had the opportunity to mentor a couple young men who were um, either close to or in gang life um, in an effort to, to help them find another path, a um, better path for them. Um, so a lot, a lot of our education may actually come from the gangs themselves. In addition to that, um, I do a lot of my own reading and research. I try to stay up to date on the current criminology and sociology um, research as it pertains to street gangs. 
Um, and I also regularly communicate with other investigators and officers within my own department, my own unit, as well as around the metro area, around the state, and even now in a network around the country uh, to continue that education, understanding of current um, activity with, with gangs. Um, there are a variety of places that this training and experience comes from. Have you ever taught classes on criminal street gangs and criminal street gang activity? I have. Would you tell the jury about those classes? <clears throat> Sure. So I'm a post-certified instructor, which means the state has uh, put me through a training course to, to um, allow me to be an instructor. And I now teach a variety of courses on criminal street gangs, from um, initial recognition and identification courses to um, courses about um, investigating gang activity, as well as um, best practices around preparing gang cases for prosecution. Um, I serve as an instructor for the Georgia Gang Investigators Association in several classes that we teach, including a basic gang investigator certification course, as well as our intermediate gang investigator certification course. Do you ever teach persons other than law enforcement officers, for instance, prosecutors, about gang activity? I do. Tell the jury about that, please. So oftentimes when teaching, especially within the Georgia Gang Investigators Association, we're teaching not only to law enforcement, but also to prosecutors and corrections. Um, and we um, actually co-teach and we'll often bring in prosecutors to serve as instructors as well um, within those courses. Additionally, I've had the opportunity to present on gangs to a variety of community groups over the years who've wanted to know more about criminal street gangs. Um, one example is Grady Hospital. Um, hospital technicians often are treating patients who may have been injured um, by way of gang activity, and they had some concerns about ensuring that. Yes, Your Honor. Um, the detective is not offering <coughs> the testimony for the truth of the matter asserted. I'll overrule the objection. Thank you. You may go ahead, please. So in treating patients that may have been um, a victim or potentially involved some way in gang activity, they wanted to ensure that they were able to um, protect both the patient that's being treated as well as deal with any issues that may arise as family and friends respond to the hospital um, after an event would happen. Um, so in an effort for patient care, um, I've done some training for them. I've also done gang pres presentations for groups that deal with refugees. Um, oftentimes, refugee communities may find themselves with um, an unstable social environment around them, an unstable um, living environment that unfortunately often breeds criminal street gangs. And so groups that provide services to refugees um, oftentimes will want training to help them um, uh, intervene and uh, dissuade um, young people from joining or being involved in street gangs and to help the community um, respond to that in a way that's healthy and good. So um, not only in law enforcement and prosecutors, but I've also had the chance many times to share um, gang information with members of the community who are um, helping to, to solve this issue. When you are interacting with prosecutors, what is it that you are attempting to train prosecutors on that you feel will in any way be useful to prosecutors? <clears throat> Objection irrelevant. Overruled. Excuse me. So one of the things that we realized along the way of working with prosecutors um, on criminal street gang investigations is that oftentimes we expect prosecutors to understand what we're seeing on the street with street gangs the same way that we see it. The reality is that oftentimes we are on the street or in the middle of investigations on a daily basis when prosecutors may handle a wide variety of cases, some of which may involve gang activity, some of which may not. But at any rate, um, it's important for prosecutors to understand what we see as investigators, um, what we're looking for in our investigations, and what evidence may be available to present in court um, at such time as there's a prosecution presented. Do you have an estimate of how many criminal street gangs you've investigated during the course of your law enforcement career? And by investigated, I mean led the investigation, been involved in the investigation, or assisted in some other way? Uh, it would be a, a rough estimate. It's certainly dozens and, and likely um, over 100 uh, different gangs or groups over the years. Would you tell the jury what your responsibilities currently are as a gang investigator? So my responsibilities as, as a gang investigator um, at this point honestly encompass almost every aspect of gang investigations. Um, I and others in my unit um, respond often to crime scenes where um, gang activity may be suspected either as a victim or a suspect. 
Um, we conduct investigations ourselves within our unit, which means we may actually carry out interviews, recover evidence, and um, actually do the investigation of the crime itself. We also support other units within the Atlanta Police Department and even other agencies around the area. So if a specialized unit like our homicide unit, our robbery unit, burglary, things like that, if they have a crime they believe may have some tie to gang activity, we may support their investigation with any information or intelligence that we have to offer, um, as well as participating in their investigation with them. And then um, I'm also Within my assignment at the gang unit, co-assigned with the United States Marshal Service Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force, and also with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, their statewide gang task force. So between those two assignments, I investigate gang activity, not only in the Atlanta area, but also around the state, and also uh, am often involved in seeking fugitives who are wanted for crimes in connection with criminal gang activity. Can you tell the jury an estimate of how many gang members that you've come in contact with or interviewed over your years with the Atlanta Police Department? At this point, it's thousands. I'm sorry. At this point, it's thousands. And when you do come in contact with gang members or alleged gang members, what is your purpose of speaking with them? Well, it certainly depends on the situation. Um, as I've stated, um, sometimes we're arresting gang members. Sometimes we're arresting them for warrants that they already have. Sometimes we're making probable cause arrests. We're, we've witnessed a crime, or we've had a crime reported to us when we're making arrests at that time. Other times, particularly when I first started out as a gang officer, I didn't know a lot about gangs. And one thing that I did as a patrol officer, I continued as a gang officer, is I like to, I like to get out and talk to people. Um, I like to talk to people who are not suspected of crime, who are just members of the community, who lived on my beat. I like to talk to people who I thought may be connected with crime. Um, there's no reason for me not to have some relationship or knowledge or rapport with them um, if we're going to be interacting on the street. So I did the same thing with gang members. Um, oftentimes, as a new gang officer, um, I'd ride around and if I saw somebody wearing some indicator of gang activity or doing something obvious, stop and talk to them. Um, stop and ask them questions. And what I found was that oftentimes gang members would be very forthcoming. Um, they were very proud of their gang affiliation or proud of that association. And yeah, I would like to respond. Hold on. <coughs> Objections, confrontation clause, right? Okay, all right. Your Honor, the confrontation clause is not implicated when we are not offering the information for the truth of the testimony that oh, is being offered. I'll rule the objection, Mr. Steele. I'll rule the objection, Mr. Steele. You may go ahead. So gang, gang members will often be very forthcoming about their affiliation and their activities. Um, some would not be, and uh, that was fine too. We'd go on about our business. Um, but over time, developing those relationships becomes important as a police officer um, in doing our job. When you received information from these various sources, be it community members, people who may have been affiliated with criminal street gangs, do you always take that information at face value? and believe it as factual? No, certainly not. Do you take any efforts or any steps to corroborate the information that you gained during these encounters with various members of the community? Foster. Overruled. We absolutely do. And what kind of steps, could you tell the jury a little bit about them, do you take? And again, this depends on the case. Um, the goal here is that, especially in getting out and having conversations, is that I have conversations with multiple people. So we start to get different points of view from different people and starting to see where those things line up. Um, but we also have the opportunity to investigate and see if um, what we find through a criminal investigation actually matches up with what we're hearing from either a community member or even from a gang member themselves. Um, we sometimes will monitor jail phone calls. Um, we will sometimes monitor social media. We will um, go through incident reports and look at incidents that have happened over time to see if those are consistent with what we're being told um, by whoever that person may be. Um, we've engaged in uh, wiretaps, um, court-ordered wiretaps of, of phones um, during our criminal investigations. Um, and we, of course, again, share information amongst investigators around the metro area and, of course, around the country. What use do you have with jail phone calls, social media, wiretaps and things of that nature as it relates to criminal street gang investigations? 
Well, gang members are just like the rest of us. They communicate with people. They communicate with them over the phone. They communicate with them via social media. Now, oftentimes, their communications are going to include communications about their gang or about their gang's activities. So um, those are sources where we can find some of those communications that may shed light on our investigation. Earlier when you spoke about encountering people in the community, you said if you see someone wearing a particular color or doing a particular thing, you the direct. I'm an old world objection, Mr. Steele. It's just, it's just pointing out time and place. <laughs> old world. Thank you, Honor. And doing a particular thing, um, and you said that you get out and talk to them. Do you get out and arrest them, or do you get out and you stop a frisk, or what, what is it that you're doing when you see people wearing a particular color? Now, that's leaving. Okay, so... You can rephrase that one. When you get out and speak to them, is it solely for the purpose of making an arrest? Objection, yes, and answer. Overruled. No, ma'am. Would you elaborate a little bit? Sure. Um, in law enforcement, we call these field contacts or field interviews. Um, they're non-custodial, and essentially, um, it's just like I'd have a conversation with any one of you on the street or anybody else on the street. Um, you, you can approach someone, hey, how you doing? Do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? And then you just engage in a conversation. My style was always to introduce myself um, and to try to do so in sort of a disarming way so they understood that I'm not here to hassle you. I'm not here to arrest you. I'm not here to give you a hard time. Just want to chat for a minute. Um, once you get over that initial thing, um, yeah, a conversation is you know potentially going to happen if the person's willing to have that conversation. But um, it's it's literally just to, to stop and chat and talk talk with someone who's free to leave at any time during that conversation. In the course of your duties as a gang investigator, are you also tasked with protecting potential gang members or alleged gang members? Absolutely. Does the interaction that you have in the community with people who are gang members and non-gang members alike in any way lend itself to your ability to protect gang members? It does. Um, quite often our interactions with gang members are not only when they've committed a crime, but oftentimes when they are the victims of a crime. And it's important to me personally as a, as a law enforcement officer that they understand that we are going to pursue criminal investigations. Old. where they are the victim of a crime um, just as we would if they committed a crime. Um, and oftentimes it is within that context that we're communicating or talking to a gang member. Would you tell the jury the type of information you seek to gain during your interaction with people that you believe may be criminal street gang members? Sure. So it can be things um, simply to understand more about the gang identifier that I believe I'm seeing. If I'm seeing something that I think may be an indicator of gang activity, I may ask that person what that particular thing means to them. It could be that what I'm seeing is not an indicator of gang activity, but um, if they say that it is, then what I would then attempt to learn is more about the gang itself, um, what their understanding and their participation in the gang is, and um, what their interaction and, uh, and participation in the gang consists of. Do you also seek to learn about its member structure, ranks, rivalries, etc.? Absolutely. When you receive the information from your contacts on the street or your colleagues at APD, do you ever share the information with other agencies? I do. And for what purpose do you do that? The purpose is always to help further other criminal investigations that may involve the same people or groups. And along those lines, do those other agencies share information with you? They do. How is it that you and other law enforcement agencies engage in this information sharing that you're speaking about? One way that we do that, I've mentioned to you earlier, which is attendance at gang intelligence meetings, which are hosted in several places around the metro area um, as well as around the state. That's one forum um, whereby we all end up in the same room together and can discuss or share information that we believe may be relevant to the group as a whole. Also, through the Georgia Gang Investigators Association, we may um, also distribute um, intelligence or intelligence requests to the membership around the state um, in an effort to spread that more widely. And beyond that, we also develop our own personal relationships and connections. So we get to know each other um, across jurisdictions or even within our own agency over time. And so therefore, we have people we can reach out to that may know a particular area or a particular gang in case we need some specialized information. Now, have you ever been called to aid in or execute a search warrant? I have. And 
as it relates to criminal street gang activity, would you tell the jury how many search warrants you've been a part of since you have worked with the gang unit? I, I couldn't count. I mean, it would be dozens and, and maybe even hundreds at this point. What type of information would you typically typically gain from the execution of a search warrant as it relates to a gang investigation? Let's Let's you. <clears throat> So as with any criminal investigation, a search warrant is a tool that may allow us to uncover evidence of an underlying crime. Um, that could be evidence of you know, a weapon or other item that may have been used in the commission of the crime. It could allow us to recover the proceeds of the crime, what was maybe taken or, or stolen during a particular crime. Um, other types of, of uh, physical evidence that may be available. More particularly, in a gang investigation, <clears throat> when we secure a search warrant, um, we may be asking additionally to search for evidence of a criminal street gang as well and a person's association with a criminal street gang. That could include things like clothing, attire, um, gang rosters or books of knowledge, written documents about the gang. That could include photographs, digital evidence, um, a variety of things that may indicate whether a particular crime was um, what we would say participation in the gang's activities. But there may be some gang connection to the crime itself. So a specialized gang investigator <clears throat> excuse me, may be asked to help with drafting or writing a search warrant to include um, an explanation for the judge as to why we're seeking additional evidence particularly related to a gang. Is it common for sworn law enforcement officers to seek out your expertise in identifying gangs and gang members? It is. Have you ever been qualified as an expert in criminal street gangs and criminal street gang activity? I have. How many times? Um, over 25 times. Do you know what jurisdictions? I do. Would you tell the jury? I'm uh, in Fulton, Newton, and Cherokee counties. Your Honor, at this time, state tenders <coughs> Mark Belknap as an expert in the field of criminal street gang recognition, investigation, identification, and practices. Same objection. Any, any council wish to vote our um, detective development? No, Dr. Just for reasons. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, <coughs> note your objection for the purpose of the record um, at this point in time. Hearing none, the court will designate uh, Detective Beltnack as an expert in criminal street gang recognition, investigation, identification, and practices. Thank you, Detective Belknap, are you aware of the legal definition of a criminal street gang? I am. Understanding the court will give the law to the jury that to the jury that it is to employ, but what legal definition of criminal street gang do you employ during your investigation? Objection, Your Honor. All ruled. Thank you. <clears throat> so Atlanta Police Department uses the same definition that comes from our state law. And that is that a criminal street gang is any organization, association, or group of three or more persons. Contemporaneous jury instruction that you give the law. <clears throat> Mr. Steele, I'm going to overrule that at this point in time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. But I do give the law. I'll give you the law related to um, that. You'll apply the facts and the evidence as you determine them to be at once the case before the case is submitted to you. So, Detective Belknap, would you tell the jury um, what definition you employ during your investigation? Yes, ma'am. It's uh, a criminal street gang is any organization, association, or group of three or more persons associated in fact, whether formal or informal, who participate in criminal gang activity. Now, what is the definition <clears throat> of criminal gang activity that you use during your investigations? So. <clears throat> Overruled, please, and there will be a continuing objection. Thank you. Criminal gang activity is defined as the commission, the attempted commission, the conspiracy to commit, or the solicitation, intimidation, or coercion of another person to commit any of another, a number of crimes that are listed out within the act. Um, without going through all of those um, completely for you, they fall broadly into four categories. And those are crimes against persons, crimes against property, firearms, and narcotics. There are some additional charges um, listed out that we can um, investigate, which include things like recruiting someone to join a street gang. 
um, trying to prevent someone from leaving a street gang, um, attempting to keep someone from testifying against a street gang, um, attempting to help someone escape from custody, and some other things like that, particular to criminal street gang investigations. Now, does the group of three or more people that you mentioned to the jury and the definition that your agency employs, do they have to commit the crime together in order to be charged with or prosecuted for criminal gang yeah. activity? I'll sustain the objections to that. So would you explain to the jury how it is that you make a distinction as a gang investigator between a crime that is committed solely for personal reasons versus a crime that is intended to further the interest of a street gang? I'm going to overrule the objection. I'm going to overrule the objection. You may explain. May explain if you can remember the question, sir. I can. It's a, it's a big question, Miss Love. Um, I don't know if we can break that down at all. <clears throat> Why don't you rephrase the question? I, I can rephrase that question. As a gang investigator, do you consider every crime committed by a gang member criminal gang activity? I do not. And in what circumstances would a crime committed by a gang member not be considered gang activity? Just give the jury some examples. That's not beyond the can of the jury. All rule, Mr. Steele. If we believe a particular crime was committed by a gang member, what we're looking for is to determine whether or not that crime was committed as participation in a particular gang's activities. Um, certainly, a member of a gang could commit a crime that may have nothing to do with the gang itself. Um, as an example, if a gang member is at home with his wife or girlfriend and they get into an argument, not an argument over the gang, just an argument over you know some household chores or whatever relationship problems they have, and it turns physical, um, that person could be arrested for domestic violence battery, something of that nature. Um, unless that crime had something to do with the gang, it would just be a crime committed by that person um, separate from the gang's activities. How do you determine, or what do you look for in determining whether a crime is in furtherance of a particular criminal street gang? One of the important things we have to understand is what the gang's activities are. Um, we may know that a person's a member of a gang, but we need to understand what the gang does. Um, what are their criminal activities? So once we understand that, <clears throat> we may look at a variety of factors during our investigation. Um, we'll attempt to uncover the motive for the crime um, as the perpetrator saw it. We may ask questions of the victim. How did the victim perceive this crime? Did the victim perceive this as some act of retaliation by a criminal street gang? Or did they perceive this as being something having to do with them being a member of a rival gang? Um, we may look at the location where this crime has happened. Um, gangs often will control turf or territory for the purpose of committing crime, and so they will then commit those crimes in their area where they feel like um, they may be safe from prosecution or safe from rivals during the commission of their crimes. Um, we may also look at with whom they commit these crimes. Obviously, we're talking about a group of people, and they're working together for a purpose, and they're working together for a reason, the same way any other group of people works together. Um, so if they're working with other gang members to participate in these crimes, that may be an indicator that a particular crime is going to be part of that gang's activities. When you first started out as a patrol officer with APD, did you observe signs of what you thought were criminal street gang activity just during your daily work? Yes, it's so great. Home rule, Mr. Steele. Could you ask the question again? Yes. When you first began working as a patrol officer with the Atlanta Police Department, you said that you were you familiar with criminal gangs and criminal gang activity. We'll start there. I had some familiarity with criminal gangs, yes. <clears throat> and as you conducted your responsibilities with the Atlanta Police Department, uh, were you aware of criminal street gangs in the city of Atlanta at that time? I was aware. Um, I would honestly say that I probably missed a lot of stuff early on, um, even as a new police officer. Um, but during the course of my, um, my career, I began to, to recognize and notice criminal gang activity um, more so than I had in the past. You said you probably missed a lot of stuff. What, what do you mean by that? What are you talking about? Your Honor, I don't even know what you were talking about. <clears throat> Relevant, Your Honor. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll sustain it as to form. You can rephrase. Yes. 
did you always recognize signs of criminal gang activity when you started out as a patrol officer? Jackson, yes, and answer. Oh, <clears throat> well, it's, it's hard to say. I, I only suspect that I miss things now because I know a lot more than I did then. Um, and, and looking back, I likely um, just didn't understand connections, didn't understand um, identifiers that I was seeing, and things of that nature early on. Were you, at the time that you started with the police department, familiar with larger criminal street gangs in larger jurisdictions like California, Chicago? I, I had some familiarity, yes. And did you see in Atlanta um, those kind of gangs when you first started out? Um, I did not initially interact with those, those types of gangs in Atlanta. What, during the course of your time as an investigator with the gang unit and with the Atlanta Police Department, what type of gangs have you found to exist in the city of Atlanta? And compare them, if you will, to gangs that might exist in, for instance, California. Our compound question. A question. <coughs> rephrase it. Break it down. <coughs> Breaking it down. Are you able to describe for the jury the types of gangs that you have encountered during your time as a law enforcement officer? I can. I can. Um, there are many different types of gangs, um, but there are really three categories that we typically um, look at as far as the criminal street gangs that we see here. Um, and those three categories are traditional, non-traditional, and hybrid street gangs. And to your question, I've seen all three of those types um, in my time working with the Atlanta Police Department. Would you explain to the jury what a traditional street gang is in your work? <clears throat> sure. So traditional street gangs are going to be gangs that you may be familiar with, even from television and movies and things of that nature. These may be West Coast Bloods and Crips. It may be you know folk gangs like the Gangster Disciples from Chicago. Um, you know other blood sets from up in New York and New Jersey. But those traditionally styled gangs. What distinguishes a traditionally styled gang is that they may be national or international, but aren't necessarily. It's really more about the structure of the gang itself. A traditional gang will have a strict hierarchy or structure um, with leaders who um, give orders down through that chain of command. They may often codify the rules of the gang into what we call a gang Bible or a book of knowledge. Um, they'll actually write down maybe an oath, a pledge, um, a way to identify other members through a, a call and response type interaction. They may have coded language that members will use to hide activities. They may have codes that they'll use um, as ways to identify um, each other and communicate. They'll wear particular sets of identifiers, which may include things like, um, like wearing colors, like flags, gang bandanas, things of that nature. They may make custom clothing or jewelry um, or all types of things that they can wear. Um, but again, the, um, the main thing to understand about a traditional gang is that structure, um, that consistency, and that sort of rigor around that gang. Non-traditional gangs are sort of on the other end of that spectrum, and these are the types of gangs that I initially saw in Atlanta and likely didn't recognize for what they truly were. Non-traditional gangs are typically neighborhood-based groups. Um, in Atlanta, traditionally, those groups were often based around our housing projects, and so they may have had much looser affiliations. There may not have been a leadership structure at all. It may have been that some older members had more influence or got more respect, um, but there wasn't necessarily a strict you know, chain of command with named ranks um, and a method by which you would move up that chain of command. They'll have specific identifiers, but they may have less identifiers than a traditional gang, and those identifiers may change. Because they're local, because it's their own thing, if they want to rebrand and sort of change things, they don't really have anybody to answer to. They can change those identifiers kind of as they, as they will. Um, and members of those gangs may be allowed to leave the gang. If they move out of the area, um, maybe there's not an expectation that they continue to participate in the gang's activities. If someone moves into the area and gets to know or becomes friendly with members of that group, they may be adopted into the group even though they're not from there. Um, but it's a much more loosely structured organization um, even though it still meets the criteria for being a criminal street gang um, based on our statutory definition called um, based on our definition of a street gang and the activities that they participate in. So that's the Before you go into um, the next portion of your response, I'm going to show you State Exhibit 1 mm -hmm. and ask you if you recognize State Exhibit 1, which has been provided to 
I do. How do you recognize they submitted letters? And this is a printed copy of a demonstrative prepared for this testimony. Will the demonstrative that you have prepared assist the jury with understanding your testimony and help you to explain it better? I hope so. <laughs> your Honor, the state tenders the state's exhibit one demonstrative for the assistance of the jury. Your Honor, can I ask one question of the witness? What is it, sir? Yes, sir. It's stage one. Stage one. And you object to Mr. Steele questioning the witness out of turn. We have provided the exhibit to the defense counsel, and I would ask that he be required to pose this question to the court. Yeah, what's your question, Mr. Steele? When was state's exhibit number, and I'm being told it's two, but I'm being told it's one also. Because we have 1A is the other thing that was admitted, the CV. So this is one. Okay. Thank you. When was it originally created is my question in order to make the objection. Not this one, but the original. When you cross him, you can ask him that question, okay? All right. Then I maintain my objection. Okay, that's fine. Your objection is noted in addition to what was heard. Yes, go ahead. Mr. Sharp. May we have a continuum? Yes, you may, sir. And I'd also like to add 24-404A is implicated by Mr. Steele's objection. Stage 1A. All right, sir. So noted. Overruled. Stage 1 is admitted for purposes of the demonstrative aid. Thank you, Your Honor. Permission to publish. Yes. You may publish it. Your Honor, this is just for the record, not to go out to the jury. That's correct, sir. Demonstrative aid doesn't go to the jury, sir. I'm going to give you a flicker and ask that you utilize the Stage Exhibit 1 as necessary to explain your testimony. Okay. So would you go ahead and start with the first part of what has been listed as Stage Exhibit 1 and talk about that with the jury? So one thing we haven't discussed yet is what you now see on the screen, which we call the gang triangle. This is a graphical representation of what our gang investigations are seeking when we're investigating potential violations of our street gang act. What we're looking for is evidence that a person who is employed by or associated with a criminal street gang has participated in that gang's activities through the commission of those enumerated criminal offenses from the statute. And so we're looking for a nexus or a connection between those three elements to find if there may have been a violation of the law. And let me ask you this. Does the Atlanta Police Department have criteria to identify or confirm gang members? We do. Would you explain those to the jury? And I'll just make a point that may just be semantics. We don't typically use the term confirming gang members. Our goal is to, when we can, identify whether someone is a member or associate of a criminal street gang as it relates to our investigations. And so in order to help us do that, we use a six-criteria system that was developed in California over 30 years ago, has been used since that time all around the country in this effort. The first criteria is when someone self-admits membership in the gang. The second criteria is when that person is identified by an informant with previously tested reliability. The third is when the person is identified by an informant who is previously untested or has previously unknown reliability, but that information is independently corroborated. The fourth is when a person resides in or frequents a known gang area, adopts the style of dress or mannerisms or other distinguishing characteristics of that gang, and associates with other known gang members within that context.
Detective Belknap. I, I'm sorry. I was giving them time to write. Okay. Yeah. The fifth is when a person's arrested several times in the company of other identified or known gang members for crimes consistent with that gang's activities. And the final category is when someone um, shows some signs or indications of being associated with the gang but doesn't meet one of those other criteria, we may categorize them as a gang associate. And for us, the way that we teach this and we, the way that we employ that is that the person associates with them within the context of the criminal activity of the gang, not just that they know the gang member or maybe family or something like that. Um, it's that they associate them within the context of the gang's criminal activities. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Objection. <laughs> 